Welcome to Big Deeds. Hey, it's Harley again here on the channel where we teach you how to be harder, better, faster, stronger, smarter, calm, confident, motivated. All right, welcome to the new year and the new decade. 2020, it is the year of clarity. And today I am coming to you on my 30th birthday, January 8th, 2020. This is my 30th birthday. It is a new decade for me. And 2020 is a new decade for the world. Um, 2020 vision for your goals. 2020 vision. All right. I want to talk to you about goals and how to accomplish your goals. First, how to avoid some traps. The first trap I wanted to discuss is comparing yourself to others. You can only do your best. You have many people that compare themselves to others. They might, for example, compare themselves to a schoolmate, someone they grew up with in high school, and they <laughs> see their friend on Instagram, and their friend is married with that picket fence and five square kids, and they're uh, making six figures in, in a great job, and they graduated like valedictorian. Don't compare yourself to them. Here's what happens if you compare yourself to them. So they are performing at a certain level. And if you're comparing yourself to them, then you want to outperform them. The only way for you to outperform them is for you to do your best and for them to do less. You have a desire, if you have this jealousy, for them to underperform. So that is a bad vibe. And I'm a promoter of good vibes only. That is not the thing you want. Jealousy is a vice. The next thing, aside from competition, is succumbing to pressure and stress. There are many people out at work or trying to accomplish their goals, and they might uh, have deadlines, they might be understaffed, not have the resources they need to succeed to accomplish their goals by a certain deadline. This causes you to be in a stressful environment. You might have anxiety. You might have a stressful situation. You're yelling at your coworkers, the people you're working with. This creates bad relationships. This creates um, a bad team dynamic, a bad team culture. It could cause people not to want to work with you anymore. It could cause people not to respect you. There are two different types of ways that you can lead. You can lead out of respect or you can lead out of fear. You can pull people to do the good through respect. They see you working hard and you see how they respect them and then they want to do the work and do good by you so that they are accomplishing what you want to do out of respect for you. Or you could lead by fear. You could be yelling and screaming. And what if when no one is looking, let's say you're out of the office for that day and you're normally the leader of them and you're leading by fear. They're going to be like, Oh, he's not here. We can get away with murder or they might not, they might half ass their work. Um, if you lead out of respect, they will respect you so much. They will see you putting in a hundred per 10 percent and see you respecting them. And when you're not there, they will be doing the work very diligently out of respect for you because they're spreading those good vibes. The next um, thing I want to talk to you about today is how working under stress and anxiety can lead to mistakes. It can lead to you making huge mistakes. You might be trying to shave off a few minutes, a few minutes of time by rushing and yelling. This can cause you to cut to uh, days of delay or hours of delay or even set you back to the beginning. Imagine you're building a house and you're doing the wiring and you're rushing and you're telling people to hurry, 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 get that wiring straight. You have to do it this way, that way. And somebody connects a wire wrong when you're uh, building that house. This could lead to a fire and then you ha then you're out of your budget and you have to start from scratch because the house is burned down now. That's just one extreme example of something that could happen. 
The next thing I want to talk to you about is failure. Failure can uh, is a beautiful thing. It is a gift. It can cause some people to get down on themselves or even even worse, they can give up. They could have to give up uh, because they uh, give in to despair. You have so much time is the first thing to remember. You have so much time in your life. And especially if you take care of your health, you have even more time. By the time uh, people my age are going to re reach retirement, they will probably have technologies that can help to extend people's lives far beyond the lifespan of today's citizens. Some people accomplish their goals way late in life. They might have been struggling all throughout their life and get to middle age and then finally get their stuff together and then they're plowing through their goals and they're accomplishing great things. A famous example of somebody who failed early and went on to huge success is Abraham Lincoln. We'll cover more people, including Abe, that failed many times early in their life and they went on to do great things. Failing is a beautiful gift. You learn so much from failing. The Many people say fail often and fail hard. And I would also add fail with humility, humility, but fail accidentally. Don't try to fail, but when it happens, take it for the gift that it is. It is a powerful gift and in no way can you learn a lesson this powerful through any seminar or course that you might take. This is a extremely powerful lesson. It is a very strong emotional reminder not to make that mistake again. It, not only will you learn from the technical mistake, oh, don't connect this wire because it causes a fire, but you will also learn emotionally and through your strategy of how you can lead people so that you do not make these mistakes. You can learn also emotionally to get past it and build that confidence because you've been through it before and you know what routes take you towards that failure. So this is the way to go. Work at your goals and your tasks at work or at home in your uh, entrepreneurial efforts. Work at them with no stress, no rush, and no anxiety. Perform your tasks as efficiently as you can without rushing. Be mindful and enjoy the process. Treat others you're working with, your coworkers and the people on your team with respect and give 110% effort. So the stress and anxiety will not help you. People think it will help them to get the job done faster or more effectively or more efficiently. It will not. You'll forget things. You'll make huge mistakes. If you work at your tasks, enjoy the process, be mindful of every move you make, but work as efficiently as you can and stay calm you will be able to accomplish your goals much faster. The last thing I wanna to cover today is that there are a certain way to make a goal. You're not designing dreams, you have dreams and you design goals to meet those dreams. Some people say a goal is a dream with a deadline. So you need to make your goals so that they're very easy and almost certain to be accomplished. You wanna make your goals smart goals. Smart goals, S-M-A-R-T. You want them to be specific. You want them to be measurable. You want them to be aligned. You want them to be realistic and you want them to be time bound. Specific is not I will get in better shape. Specific is I will lose 50 pounds in the next two years. Measurable is something that I will not, I will get smarter. 
I will improve my GPA by um, X amount of GPA points by this time is measurable. Or again, with the weight thing, with the 50 pounds. So they're specific, measurable. They're aligned to what you want to do. They are, your goals should be aligned to your why. You should know why you want to do something. Why do you have this dream? Your goals need to be realistic. They have to actually realistically be able to attain. You can't be say, I want to fly like Superman without any sort of gear whatsoever because that is just not realistic. And they have to be time bound. You have to give yourself a deadline. The way to design your goals is to determine where you are. Where are you right now? Where do you want to go? What do you need to do to get there? Why do you want to get there? What is your reason? What is your why? Align all your goals to your why and break down your goals into a 10 year goal, a five year goal, yearly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, daily goals, and have them all supporting each other. For example, a simple example would be, let's say you want to save 120 thousand dollars in the next 10 years that would mean that you would need to to break it into smaller goals in the next five years you will need to save sixty thousand dollars in the next year you will need to save twelve thousand dollars if you save twelve thousand dollars for the next 10 years you will have met your goal that means you have to save one thousand dollars every month that's $250 a week. That's $33 a day. See, I broke my goal down into small goals. And then you figure out what do you need to accomplish your daily goal. So, for example, you say, I'm not going to go out and buy coffee. I'm not going to go out to the bar and buy drinks. I'm not going to buy dinner. I'm not going to go out to the movies. I'm going to have fun exercising in the park or um, hanging out with my friends on a bike ride. Um, turning down the heat or the AC, all these things can help you to accomplish your goal. You need to calculate how much of an effect each of these things would have towards your daily goal of saving $33 every day. And then see if you're meeting your goals. If you're not, you need to problem solve. You need to figure out why is it that you are not meeting your goals. You need to ask why. You need to get to the root cause of why you're not accomplishing your goals. If you are able to get to that uh, root cause, and you will if you ask enough whys. Why? Let's say, for example, you are uh, trying to lose weight and you have broken it down into, in the next year, you want to lose, um, let's say you want to lose 120 pounds in the next year. Let's say you're obese, you want to lose 120 pounds. And for some, and you break it down into your, so 120 pounds over the next year, that's 60 pounds in the next six months. That's 10 pounds a month. Okay, so if you need to lose 10 pounds a month and you start in January 1st, New Year's resolution, and then you're get, you notice February, you've only lost eight pounds and then you're losing less and less Maybe in, um, in January, you only lost seven pounds. Maybe March, you only lost five pounds. You're saying to yourself, why am I not meeting this goal? You do an uh, analysis. You say, okay, oh, okay. So the, the reason is because I'm not burning enough calories. And why am I not burning enough calories? I'm not getting, the reason is because I'm not getting to the gym. Okay, why am I not getting to the gym? Oh, the gym I usually use at my work. It's uh, being refurbished and it's not, I'm not able to get to the gym and uh, not as often because it's being refurbished, being worked on. So you need to figure out what do you need to do in order to solve that problem? Maybe your uh, resolution is, okay, I still need to burn these calories. I'm gonna go run in the park or buy a treadmill. And then in the meantime, while that gym is being refurbished, you're still burning those calories. You can still get to your goal. And then see, is that actually helping you get to your goal? If it's not, then you need to reevaluate, problem solve again. 
Okay, uh, there was this famous example of the uh, the Washington Monument. There was a lot of it was wearing away, and they were saying, "Why is this wearing away?" And they they found out that it was because they were cleaning it so often with harsh chemical solutions. And they said, well, why are we cleaning so often? It's because the birds are all pooping on the Washington Monument. Okay, so why are the birds all pooping on the Washington Monument? Oh, there's because there's a lot of bugs around there. Why are there a lot of bugs around there? Oh, it's because the lights. The lights are shining on the monument. The bugs are attracted to the light. Okay, what was the solution? They turn off the lights earlier in the evening and uh, at the time when the bugs were really attracted to it and that kept the bugs away, birds weren't coming, less bird poop, less cleaning, less wearing away. So asking why enough times will lead you to your root cause. Do not stop asking why until you get to your root cause and then problem solve that root cause. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want you to accomplish your goals. I want you to be the best version of yourself. New Year's time is a very unique time. It, a lot of people set goals around New Year's. And it's not actually, it's not actually the move to wait until New Year's to try to set and accomplish goals. Because you have to remember, any day you can set goals. It doesn't matter if it's February 2nd or June 23rd. You can set a goal any day and if you get stuck in the path of New Year's resolutions, you might catch yourself waiting until January, the next January 1st in order to set and accomplish your goals. So keep that in mind and keep coming back. As always, not to be cliche, but like and subscribe and subscribe for good vibes. Shout out to Amy, who is, um, uh, has a channel, a YouTube channel for uh, success and accomplishing goals. She always says, subscribe for good vibes. Shout out to Two Tito Dudes and Tommy D, Thomas DeLauer. Shout out to, um, shout out to the wit, uh, Midwestern Method. Great, great YouTube. All right, guys, that's it for today. And stay tuned for more updates. This is a really exciting channel, and I am so happy that you're a part of it.